Hey everyone, so um, this is my first uh, modular tutorial video, so it's very exciting. Uh, I'm Vic, if you haven't met me, and I fell into the Eurorack hole um, about a year ago, um, and now I have far too many modules. And one of my favourites is this ER101 indexed quad sequencer from Orthogonal Devices, which I think is a, a fantastic piece of kit, especially when it's paired with its partner here, the ER102. Um, and I've seen a lot of requests for videos on, on how best to uh, make use of this and some of its more advanced features. Um, and I'm also basing this idea a bit on Neil Parfit's videos on the ER301 sound computer, um, which are excellent. And I've seen a lot of people say, you know, why could somebody make something similar for the ER101 uh, and the ER102? So that's where I'm coming from here with these videos. Um, so you may already be, you know, familiar with the basic usage of this, um, or you might be a com completely new to it. So I will start at the beginning. There might be several videos, um, and you know, we'll we'll go over just just using it in its basic sense of a sequencer. Um, some things you can do with it and we'll go through all the different features so we like the tables the uh, which make it unique um, and also the parts and the groups which I think people find a bit more confusing certainly I did it took me absolutely ages to understand groups and when I did it was like a revelation um, but we'll we'll start at the beginning um, so on that basis let's have a look at, at what we're looking at here on the display um, so what you see on the display depends um, partially on this mode switch down here, um, which, and it'll be easiest to see that difference if I actually run the sequencer. So there's a little sequence in it now, but it's currently paused, which you can tell from this, this pause LED here. The clock input is here. So you can see it's receiving the clock input because that's rotating. And that gives you an idea of the speed as well, but it's currently paused. So if I unpause it, we'll hear the sequence. And because I have this switch in the follow mode, we will see uh, the details of the sequence as it goes. So in this follow mode, you're seeing the details of the sequence as it plays. We'll go into more about what each bit means. Uh, soon, whereas if we go to this edit mode, it stops moving because we can go in and edit here. So you use this to see what's happening, and you use this mode to actually go and, and change values and things like this. And you can go through and change the, the CV. So I'll just pause it again. There's another mode there, hold, but we'll, we'll get into that. Basically, you can put this up, make some edits, and then hit this commit button, and only then do the edits happen. Um, okay, so to, to just go over it, the, the basic use of it, what all the bits on the display mean, I will delete my, my patch and we'll, we'll start again. So to do that, you load this blank snapshot. So if you've just bought one of these and plugged it in and turned it on, then this is what you'll see here. Um, and as you're probably aware, it has four tracks. Um, so you can plug these in to, your, to four um, of your voices or what have you, you want to control with the sequencer in your system. And each track has a gate output and two CV values. So you get a total of eight CV values over the, the four tracks. Um, and the way you use the interface is you focus a control by hitting one of these buttons. So there I've focused track, and there's two focuses, there's one on each side for each one of the two encoders. So there I've focused track, and if I turn this encoder, that changes that track value that we're, we're looking at. Nothing else changes because they're all empty at the moment. And then on this side, we could use this one to, to change this value, but there's nothing there yet. Um, but we will be able to do that once it is there, so we'll get to that in a minute. So once again, you, you focus something by hitting the button and then you turn, use the encoder to, to change the value. Um, excuse if you can hear the uh, car alarm in the background, it'll probably turn off uh, in a minute. So, um, 
in order to, to do anything with the sequence, like if we unpause it now, nothing will happen because there's, there's no sequence information. Um, so we need to add some. So each track um, has sequence information which is made up of patterns and each pattern has steps. So we can start off by inserting a pattern and use these buttons to do things like inserting or deleting things and the thing which gets inserted or deleted depends on what you have focused. So let's insert a new pattern. Now we have pattern number one here. We still don't have anything in here because we need steps. So we'll insert a step to our pattern. Nice and easy. Now there's one step in our pattern and you can see it has some default values. So at this point you're like, oh great, let's hear it. And again, nothing happens. Let's pause again. So why is that? I just reset it. I don't think that would do anything anyway. So why is that? Well, it's because the duration of the step uh, isn't set. So if we set this to, I don't know, so 24, because this is a, a 24 pulse per quarter note clock I've got going in. Uh, and if we unpaused it, still nothing will happen because we need a gate value. So I'll just turn that up to two and we should hear something when we unpause. So that's um, my elements module up there you're hearing. Um, so this is just the same step over and over again and we can change the pitch because I have pitch on CVA and we can change the tomba because I have that on CVB. There's a delay on it as well. Uh, so if I make this longer it will Maybe we should turn the delay off. That still hasn't turned it off, has it? There we go, that's better. So now you're hearing that ping every 74. That's made it slower. Let's bring it back down. my 120 BPM 24 PPQN clock. Uh, I don't think the gate length will actually be... Oh no, we can hear it in the envelope of the rings. And then we've gone over the duration and that stops it. Not rings, elements. I'll get my head straight in a minute. So there you go, so that's one note. So let's actually make a sequence. So we're still focused on step there. So if we hit insert a bunch more times, we'll get some more steps. So let's have another couple of those. And then let's change this value maybe on one of those. Turn this down. And you see this display up here because of the place this switch is set, in fact, because of the table, but we'll get more into the tables later. That actually tells you the, the key. Now, I don't think I've got my elements in tune, but if I did tune it properly so that, you know, zero volts was a C, then this would be a D on this step. Now at this point, you sort of, it's easy to get a bit lost about which one you're hearing, which is why it's useful to go to this follow mode just by hitting that switch. And it's easy to see what's going on. So say I want to change that last note. I'm like, which one is it? Uh, um, okay, that's number five. We can go back here. So that's a five step sequence. Um, but each step in the sequence can have these values completely set independently. So let's move back to three and maybe make it half the duration. to this one. See, and we get an interesting rhythm already. Um, so that's what really, you know, s makes this stand aside immediately as compared to a sort of linear sequence where everything has to be the same length. Um, it's really easy to just go in and, and change those values. Um, and in fact, you can hold down on, I believe it's duration, 
uh, and move. So let's go to uh, step one and step two at the same length. If we hold that down, change that to 25, we'll see that one's become 23. And that just will swing the rhythm slightly, so let's do that some more. You see that one's now 18. So it's got lots of useful features like that that make it easy to um, quickly get these values to where you want. Um, and there's another um, incredibly useful feature along those lines as well, um, which applies to the sort of core operating principle of this in lots of things, uh, things in the groups and everything, and that is this math button here. Um, so what the math button does is you hold, you hold it down and it gives you this interface um, and these are operations you can do on each of the properties of a step. Um, a means add and the G with the little um, symbol there means multiply. So at the moment it's adding zero and multiplying it by one so if I let go nothing happens. If I had made uh, some changes there, it would have only applied to this step because that's what's focused. But if I focus the pattern and I hit math, then it would apply to everything in the pattern. So let's have a go at that. Uh, I think I hit it twice by mistake. So let's add 12 semitones to the whole pattern pitches. It goes up. And if I hit that, and there's a thing you can do with the expander, which is just hit invert here, and that inverts the math, so we go back. If you didn't have the expander, you could go through and, and set this yourself. So, say you're here, just turn this down to minus 12, and you're back. And zero does nothing. So you see it keeps the, the last transformation. Uh, and if you don't want to hold it down um, because you want to do some more intricate changes, you hold it down and you hit this up here. See that says flashing pin? <coughs> Excuse me. Hit that. Now you can let go and we can take our time modifying this. So now yeah, there's some things we can do as well as adding and subtracting. And you do that by hitting this and we can now change what it does. So that's multiply, that's add, as we've said. We've also got add a random amount, jitter, which is like adding or subtracting a random amount, um, and this is quantize. Um, so let's add a random amount to our CVB, which as you recall was um, changing the geometry, the, the timbre of the elements. So let's add a random amount between naught and I don't know, 30. All right. Um, so if we hit math, let's get out of the screen. Back to follow mode. You can see that this now has random values. If I wanted to do maths on only one step, I could have selected it here. Um, we did the whole pattern, but that would have only done one of the patterns if we had multiple patterns. So let's add another pattern. So pattern two, no steps. We'll add one in. Let's take that back down to zero. That'll help us tell we're on the second pattern. Um, let's make this one quite high, right? So that's a, that's a high A. And let's make these ones quite short, um, like that. And you can just hear it there. So I'll add in a whole load of these. Let's just see that follow mode. So this is pattern one, pattern two. So let's, let's select our pattern two. Um, and make the melody a bit more interesting just with that random function. So we want to clear this, which you can do by hitting delete. That's back to the, the basic math. Um, and we wanted to 
let's just check we're on two, yeah. We want to make the melody more interesting, so we'll do the jitter here, and let's do it up to an octave, right? So let's see what that sounds like. So now we have a little random burst of sound in our pattern two, but it didn't affect pattern one because I have pattern two selected. But if you wanted to do them all, then you could have selected track and done math. So I think uh, for the first part of the video, that's maybe a good place to stop. We've got lots more to cover. Um, but, you know, I'll see how the recording went. As I say, this is my first time at this, so any suggestions, let me know. Um, we've got lots of fun stuff coming up uh, with this and more musical things to do. So, thanks for listening so far. <laughs>